this gig is a great gig. We had a weekend with over 100 entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs pitching. One of them, Santi from Sender Athletics, brought us a football in SoCap colors. He's not on stage, but his football is. If anyone wants to kick around later. It's not. Um, come grab it. So now we have three social entrepreneurs. We picked out from more than 100 this weekend, epitomizing the quality of the individuals and their projects that we worked with um, from Friday through to, we've got more stuff coming on stage, from Friday through to the end of SOCAP. Um, we have Simon, Debbie, and Jason, who will uh, tell us briefly about their projects. Simon, over to you. So, You'll notice that a lot of the entrepreneurs at, uh, at SOCAP are talking about changing lives. But to me, I think it's glaringly obvious, and I hope it is to you as well, that there's one life that people are forgetting about. I think you know what I'm talking about. Of course, it's the life of toilet paper. Toilet paper has been behind us every single day of our lives. <laughs> and I think that it's time that we get behind toilet paper. That's why I've started a toilet paper company that builds toilets. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This all started because toilets are funny. They're so funny that they've got their own genre of humor named after them. But the reality is that toilets aren't actually that funny for about 2.5 billion people. Because 2.5 billion people, or 40% of the world, don't have access to a clean toilet. As a result, urine and feces ends up in water that's used to cook, clean, and wash, causing diarrheal-related disease that fills half the hospital beds in the developing world at any point in time. We know that there's actually a relatively straightforward solution to this problem. We need to build toilets. By building a toilet, we can improve health and well-being, life expectancy, and even school attendance rates go up. For every $1 invested in sanitation, we see an $8 increase in economic productivity. But the question is, where does this $1 come from? This is why I've started a toilet paper company that sells an environmentally friendly product here in the developed world and uses 50% of its profits to build toilets and improve sanitation in the developing world. The product itself is called Who Gives a Crap? Now, to test demand out for this concept, in July this year, I launched a campaign to pre-sell $50,000 of toilet paper. We did it on Indiegogo, which is a crowdfunding platform that I'm sure you're now all quite familiar with. To help things along, I agreed to sit on the toilet with a live webcam until we hit our $50,000 target. <laughs> Guy Kawasaki tweeted us, Paul Pollack tweeted us, the campaign went viral, we got a lot of supermarket attention and a lot of business-to-business -business attention as well. We hit our target in just 50 hours and proved for the first time in 50 years that toilet paper is exciting. <laughs> so we're now looking to keep momentum up, and that's why we're here at SOCAP. We're looking for new businesses to take our products on, but also for investors who can help us to keep moving things forward. We need to raise $250,000 in order to continue rolling out our retail brand, but also to move into the business market with a new product that's called Role Model. So if you can help, I'd love to talk to you, and together we can save the world from the bottom up. Thank you. Do we give a crap? I think we do. Debbie, Goldie Blocks, over to you. Hi, everybody. My name is Debbie Sterling, and I'm an engineer. I'm starting a company called Goldie Blocks, which makes engineering toys for girls. So, thank you. So why engineering? Well, the text message you sent on your cell phone this morning to the car that brought you here, to the chair you're sitting in right now, all of those things were built by engineers. And here's the deal. Almost 90% of engineers in the US are male. Yet half of our population is female. So if we want to live in a fair world, we need female engineers. So what do toys have to do with all of this? Well, interestingly enough, girls start to lose interest in science as young as age eight. And when you look at the world through the eyes of an eight-year-old girl, you're inundated with dolls and princesses. Meanwhile, 
all of your boys are playing with Legos and Erector sets. They're developing spatial skills. They're getting interested in math and science. There's a huge gap, and I am filling it with Goldie Blocks. And there's a lot more to it than just taking a boy's construction toy and turning it pink. So I've spent the last year researching this. How do you get a girl to like a construction toy? And I came up with a big aha. Girls have very strong verbal skills. They love reading, they love stories. So I started writing stories about a girl engineer named Goldie Blocks who loves to build. And as girls read along, they get to follow her adventures and build along with her with a construction set. So two weeks ago, I launched Goldie Blocks on Kickstarter. Today, we reached $200,000. And we have two weeks left to go. This has moved beyond a toy at this point. This is a movement. I'm not afraid to state I want Goldie Blocks to hit a million dollars on Kickstarter, and here's why. If we hit a million, we're taking this into a movement. We're telling the toy industry, hey there, we want more for our daughters than just princesses. We're telling stores, hey, Goldie Blocks deserves to sit on the shelves next to Bob the Builder and Thomas the Train. And we're telling our girls, you can be anything you want to be when you grow up. So here's my ask. I want you all to take out your phones right now. Go on to Kickstarter, look for Goldie Blocks. We're on the homepage. Go on there and support the mission and send it to your friends. There are a lot of powerful people in this room with big networks. We can make this happen. Thank you. Amazing. Jason, right. what have you brought with you? Uh, this, this is the answer to a question that I will tell you. So I'm Jason Aramburu, and I'm the founder of ReChar. And ReChar is a for-profit company that is making Kenya the world's first carbon-negative country. I believe that if we can help the poorest people in the world to prosper and make the earth richer, then maybe there is hope for all of us. So to do that, we're using a technology called biochar. Biochar is a charcoal soil amendment that's made from waste. It's the only carbon negative soil amendment in the world. So it actually lets you grow more food and take CO2 out of the atmosphere. We've developed this device here. This is a biochar kiln. It costs less than a bag of fertilizer, and it ensures that a farmer will never have to buy fertilizer again. With the support of Echoing Green and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we've used this tool to help 522 people improve their lives, grow up to 200% more food, and offset the equivalent of four US automobiles carbon emissions every year. We're on track to sell 300 of these a month with our local team of salespeople in Kenya. Some of our salespeople actually make more in a month selling these kilns than most Kenyans make in a year. But that's not fast enough. If we want Kenya and the world to be carbon negative, we need to go faster. We're looking to raise $1.1 million to get to 500,000 users in five years. With 500,000 users using this device, Kenya will actually be carbon negative. So that's about $2 a farmer to be carbon negative. And if Kenya can be carbon negative, then the whole world can be carbon negative. And I think that's pretty powerful. So I need your help to make this dream a reality. If this is interesting, come talk to me. Come check out our kiln at the Innovation Showcase. I'll show you how it works, and I'll show you what it can do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we had more than 100 social entrepreneurs like these guys. We couldn't put them all on stage. They all have deep yellow lanyards. That's your, it's like a deep yellow gold, goldy kind of color. Um, so I would really encourage you, if you see somebody with a deep yellow lanyard, slow down today, slow down tomorrow, stop, ask them what they're doing. There's more than 100 stories of this quality in this conference that we worked with over the weekend before. Thank you very much, guys.